I think I'm in the zone. My script is ready. I'm going to do it this year. My sense of patriotism is very hard-coded. I wouldn't go to a village in search of a girl to get married. <laughs> if you'd asked me to climb a mountain, I would have said, yeah, why not? Because I've not done it before. So for someone who wanted to become a doctor, you've spent over a quarter century in the film industry. Right. What is that headspace like? You know, life doesn't pan out the way you expect it to always. It teaches you something that you know, it taught uh, with the fact that I couldn't, uh, that my dad didn't want me to be a doctor and he wanted me to sign up for a business program, etc. I was initially angry, but then later on it taught me uh, to be able to enjoy whatever I'm doing and to still do it well and uh, so like a jack of all trades in a sense. So. Okay, so let's go back to another mind space. What was it like when you get your first film and your period opposite two huge stars like Rajnikanth and Mamuti? It was just fun for me. I mean, I was... You weren't nervous at all? No, not at all. Okay. Because I, I was doing some ads while I was at college and I was doing it for pocket money. Uh, and I was doing it to, uh, you know, because my dad used to give me like 10 bucks a day. So, uh, and I used to get about like, uh, I think uh, 5,000 rupees a day for an ad, for a commercial. So that was a lot of uh, money to splurge uh, with friends. Right. I suddenly realized that I think at some point that uh, if you had asked me to climb a mountain, I would have said, yeah, why not? Because I've not done it before. So when money called me, after, I think he saw some of the ads. I, mean, I, I actually didn't, I haven't asked him yet as to... You still haven't asked him? No, I, it doesn't matter. I was there. <laughs> so <laughs> he called me and I went. Uh, and uh, they did a screen test, like an audition with uh, Santosh was there. Which was the scene? Um, the uh, Acha Mille, Acha Mille, Acha Min Badilli, that part in Talabadi. Right. Acha Mille, Acha Mille, Acha Min Badilli. And then they said, yeah, you know, we have to shoot in a couple of weeks. So I, I didn't expect that actually. So I told him, I said, I haven't told my dad yet. So you'll have to come home and ask my dad. <laughs> well, I stayed out of college, I was 20 years old. So he actually came home and uh, asked my dad to permission and tried to convince him. Uh, reluctantly, my dad said yes. And then we started Talabadi. And then, he, well, uh, you know, before we went to shoot, he said, you know, you're acting against two big superstars, uh, Mamuti and Rajni sir. So, uh, and there are a lot of fine actors around. So, uh, you, you know, you have to be able to... Uh, I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. I just went and did it. So, did it come easily, this part? Of, because commercials are just 30 seconds, whereas here is learning lines. Actually, I didn't even, I didn't even think about... Even when I was doing commercials then, I didn't... I just kind of understood what they wanted out of it and I just did it. Uh, with uh, filmmaking, of course, I was very curious about, uh, you know, why the camera was placed in a particular way, why the lights were placed in a particular way, uh, why did I have to stand on the left of camera or the right of camera, because I was totally new to. Right. So those were the questions that I was asking uh, Mani or Santosh at that time. And my focus only on that. Okay. My focus not on the acting. Now, all these years later, you're back with Maniratnam and Santosh Shivan for yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanam. It's like one full circle has happened. Yeah. How are you, how is it being an actor again in the same setup? Oh, it's all different now because uh, I think uh, this is 27, 28 years later almost. Right. Everybody's evolved as human beings and in their craft as well. Um, uh, I'm to an extent a lot more liberated as an actor. My focus is there. The rest of the craft is something that I've uh, you know, learned through my journey as an actor and, uh, you know, and things that you observed right. oh, you know, through life. I mean, I started in 1990, but in between, after Roja, I was not here. I was right. in the U.S. studying. Right. Then I came back and I did it for a few more years and then I left the industry. Um, so there are a lot of, you know, experiences outside the industry that is there. So it all changes you as a person. In movies now, I... You know, I pretty much uh, contribute a lot more, I think, than okay. I did before. Before, I just do what I was asked to do. Today, it's more participative. And I, I've also evolved as a person where I don't think if I have a good idea, I should keep quiet. Okay. So, I keep, I keep voicing options, ideas all the time. And this wasn't something you did earlier? Not while the shoot was going on. Okay. For some reason, I thought, you know, uh, it's not my job. So, when did that that realization happened that you could contribute to your role or I to the Probably uh, from Tani Orvan. Okay. Oh, just that recent? Yeah, because I mean, uh, I mean, earlier I used to do something towards the end of my career, but I was not really 
interest level, not comfortable right. uh, being an actor or being a star uh, in the late 90s. Being an actor was okay, but being the star was a right. problem. I couldn't, I was not ready for it, I was not prepared for it, I couldn't deal with it. I don't, I didn't deal with it well. I found it as a, something of, you know, that was uh, pressurizing me in okay. some way and uh, found it very claustrophobic. So, uh, which is why I quit. Kadal just happened out of the blue. I wasn't even planning to make a comeback or anything like that. So, when Mani called me and said, no, no, get it. Because in between, I went through a, a spinal injury and I was almost, uh, you know, I was paralyzed and things. So, uh, I wasn't even thinking that, you know, I'm going to come back into movies. He just called me out of the blue and said, yeah, you know, you're okay now, just get ready. I said, I'm not okay. He said, no, no, you are, but <laughs> I'll give you two months, get ready. Because I had a layoff uh, prior to Cuddle, uh, I didn't even think of like, you know, making a lot of uh, suggestions or this or that. It's only in Tani Oren when uh, Mohan Raja was open to, uh, I mean, uh, we started off with a thin line of uh, how Siddhartha Vimanyu should be. And then we worked together quite a bit uh, for a few months actually on it. I mean, he was kind enough to allow me to do that. Uh, when we saw the response and when I saw the thing, I realized that, you know, it's, it's exactly what you decide is what is being liked, what is being accepted. From the audience. From the audience. Uh, and that's what, you know, the, some, some of the other options that you discarded were probably good decisions that you make. So, then it builds up from there, right? I mean, something, I think, I think now the directors expect me to participate also. So, it's, <laughs> it's the other way around. Would you say your instincts are good in these things? Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm in the zone now. Okay. So is that why you're turning director? No, it's not why I'm turning director. You won't believe. It. I've been telling money scripts since I was in my mid twenties, right? All stupid stuff. But I've been telling him that. He always encouraged me to say you should, you should. But I thought this is the right time because one, I've done four films uh, last year, uh, which which will start releasing from this year. Yeah. And I'm doing money's film now which will be the fifth. I have one more commitment, which is a bilingual uh, in Tamil and uh, another language. So, I'll finish that. And then, uh, there will be six films for release. Uh, why burden the audience with more? So, let me, <laughs> let me, uh, this is the best time for me to also, uh, my script is ready. I'm... Uh, Did you write it? Yeah, I wrote it. And uh, I had two options. I had to make a choice. So, I made a choice on one script that I've written. Can you say anything about it? Mm, I'll talk about it soon, as soon as I crystallize a few things about it. Okay. But I'm going to do it this year. So, what about the newer generation of directors that you're working with today? Apart from the fact that they are very young, is there something else that sets them apart from the directors that you worked with during the early phase of your career? Um, no, it's just the next generation. Um, we all evolve along with what we see. So, you, your sense of, uh, uh, you know, the visuals uh, and what goes with it, I'm talking about the sound or the the way it's edited or everything, you know, kind of uh, changes. So, these guys have grown up with that. Uh, so, they're very clear about, uh, like with Karthik, you know, it's, it's uh, I think he's brilliant. He's got a clarity um, about what he wants to shoot and how he wants to shoot uh, as much as any of these great people that I've worked with. And I think uh, he's probably one of the most interesting uh, screenplay writers I've met. The way he has mastery over his own story and the way he's able to juxtapose certain things and to make it more interesting as a script, I think is, it's brilliant. Uh, I think if he, if he, if he can be protected in some way, then he has a lot of great things to do. You mentioned how your you know, that the personal experiences had, yeah. uh, you know, influenced uh, your, your performance. Now, between Roja and Bombay, your parents passed away and mm -hmm. you, you said that that time that you looked much older in Bombay than you did in Roja, though the movies are just a few years apart. You said you, you looked almost yeah. 10 years older. Right. Now, in a newer part, um, there's a darkness and an edge to you that one didn't quite see earlier. Uh, part of this is, of course, the fact that these parts are villainous parts and there's a certain aspect of you that probably was not there. But is there something else, the fact that you went through your paralysis, uh, you know, that... that no, the think darkness that actually comes with the, the, the ability to look at it and say it's interesting. Okay. The darkness does not come because there is darkness inside. I mean, the, the fact that I, I actually told uh, Mohan Raja at that time, I said, I'm actually looking for a 
part not to play the conventional villain villain which you know is not what i want to do i said i want to play an unapologetic uh, negative person right so i i want to i wanted to justify and internalize that uh, part of it and the, the fact that i'm searching for something like that a role like that actually is 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 further liberating because you know that you can do it or even something like a, a small film like a an indie film like dear dad or whatever that right. i did that is also liberating for me because i had a lot of mental reluctance to get there it's about uh, a parent who comes out of the closet right and uh, admits to his sexuality right uh, to his kid i thought it was quite interesting uh, as a story but i didn't have the guts to do it to be honest and when i realized that i didn't have the guts to do it i just called up and said yes okay i realized that i was shying away because i didn't have the uh it it was my own uh, it's the arvind as a person who had certain reservations about playing a gay character about yeah not playing a, it's not about playing a gay character it's about whether i could actually mouth those lines with conviction okay okay because i never gone into the 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 alternate sexuality part alternate means to me i'm saying right within my sexuality i'm supposed to look at the other person and say i love you and i'll miss you is it easy for me to do the same thing that is not my sexuality like i'm talking about my sexual preference as me as a person right um so in fact i, I actually it's at some point i think it was in chicago or something like that and they were saying you know are you are you doing it or not kind of a thing i think i called money at that time i said i just have a you know very, very strange uh, mind space that i'm in at this point in time so he said no no why why should you i mean he also said you know you should do it an experiment so then my challenge is to find a convincing way to to say those lines right right not that i have to feel it or not it's not that but i don't even know how to fake it it was that part of it which was difficult for me so so how did it happen i mean on on sets where you no you no once some? i uh, i still remember that scene we did it in the first it was a long take we did it in one i mean everybody really liked the first take it was quite draining for me but uh, there's an emotional thing where he talks to his father who's uh, uh, i think who's got alzheimer's or something and he's like just talking to him and as a part of the confession thing so once i said yes then you know i figured out ways to do it i'm gay and i keep you know always uh, propagating the fact that uh, me personally and me as an actor are different then why am i mixing this up that personal is, decision or personal preference why is yeah why is that easy and why is this difficult one is a crime one is not yeah. or maybe in some countries it is but um, it's it's love at the end of the day and you should be able to express it while acting in roja did you ever get the inkling that it would be such a national sensation not at all okay it was just another movie yeah and, and just because i'm not from the movies or not that i wanted to be a star i was just enjoying the experience of it and i was doing and i knew that we were doing something really nice and interesting i didn't even understand the economics of what was going to happen or what could happen etc i have a question about your rishi character in roja now uh, i i've always felt one thing a little odd about that film which is like this this guy who's kidnapped and you know when this uh, kashmiri terrorist sets a national flag on fire uh, you know he kind of jumps on the fire and tries to extinguish it and when i asked maniratnam in the book about why rishi does that because i would think that you know he that this character would be a little clever enough to kind of not want to incite the terrorist in such an obvious manner but maniratnam said something very interesting he said this character's way of saying fuck you to the terrorist uh, how did you see that i loved that scene okay i felt it because my dad was a part of the freedom movement towards the end we would watch the republic day parade uh, there would be a sense of you know patriotism and things like that and he has helped a lot of people during the riots that partition you know the, the riots that followed the or pre partition or post partition riots and things like that and uh, in calcutta and so there were a lot of people who would come and fill me with stories of how they were saved by him and it was, it was like that uh, so it was very inspiring to me and uh, so my sense of patriotism was very hard coded at that time so when this scene came i just loved it okay. i thought I would, this is what i would have done also which is the closest uh, to you the character that you played that's closest to you in real life 
And he has a bit of me in everything. Okay. Uh, Even Siddhartha Abhimanyu. Yeah, sure. Okay. Maybe his confidence or his attitude or whatever it is. Okay. But actually, now I separate the two in a lot of ways. I don't try to think like how I would think in that character. I, I kind of internalize the character so much that I, I do things very differently from how I would do it. Right, but I'm talking about something like you read the script and you said, oh my God, this is just me. You know, that has no, that ever happened? Never. Never. Not even with Roja or whatever. No, never. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't go to a village in search of a girl to get married. <laughs> you Not that it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying. <laughs> when you did Roja, the Kashmir issue was going on for some time. Mm -hmm. But when you did Bombay, uh, the nation was still very raw from the riots. And it was a, you know, it was a fairly new thing that had happened. Yeah. Did that make a difference in the way the two movies were, uh, you know, you approached the two movies or the way you felt when you were, you know, uh, doing those two films? No, I, I'll just be very honest with you. Uh, uh, I was studying overseas and I had to come back because my mom was diagnosed with cancer and she was terminally ill. It's not like the prognosis was good. Um, so I came back to spend time with her in a hospital. And um, she passed away. And then in a few months, my dad also passed away. Um, then I went back to my office, our family business, whatever I went back to our, my office. I couldn't sit in the office because it was like very, it was a very directionless period for me. Uh, because I was the only child and both my parents, or I just had a dog at home and a, and a lovely gentleman who was... Uh, uh, cooking for me, who had been with me, you know, from my childhood. So these are the only two people there. And I couldn't step out of the house because I didn't know how to deal with the fame that Roja had brought in. So I, I didn't like the attention that I got. So it was a very, so I had to sit at home and there was, or I had to be at the office. There's not a space that I was comfortable with. So I knew that if I actually go and went and did Bombay, and I wasn't thinking of, you know, the riots that had just happened, I was, I was a very personal choice for me. If I could do a film like Bombay with money, and he knew where I was coming from. So in Bombay, actually, when I was not, and it was a lot of, especially the second half was a lot of grungy kind of work. You know, there would be things burning, and there would be fire, and there would be things, a lot of chaos, a lot of artists, a lot of, you know, things that are happening, and the, and the emotion was there. Uh, and uh, it would be early mornings to late nights, and there was no time to think. And I was actually, that was much needed for me in my personal space at that time. And when I was not acting, and it's not like today where you're going and sitting in a caravan or whatever it is. If I was not acting, I would have to go and do uh, junior artist management at the background or uh, set the props right. or that's the That's what he made me do. I don't know why he made me do it, but he made me do it and it just helped me get over that time in my life. Okay. Let's talk about your films that you did. The first films that you did in Malayalam, Telugu yeah. and Hindi, which is Daddy, Maunam and yeah. Satran Ke Sapne. Yeah. How was it like, you know, going to a different language? Because you just weren't this, I want, I want to become an actor. I never thought of, of all that. I did uh, Daddy because uh, Santosh was there. Okay. Yeah, it was his production. His brother Sangeet, Sangeet was directing it. Right. And he said, uh, uh, Arvind, will you do my film? I said, yeah, I'll do it. So we finished the film, I think, in 18 days. Okay. Which means, like, we would start early morning, we'd go to one in the night. I never shied away from that. I always thought, because in Talabadi, it was like that. We start off, money was at his uh, uh, craziest at that time, in terms of work timings, I'm saying. So, I, my first day of shoot started at 2 in the morning or something, went on the whole day, went on till the next night and it was like that. So, I thought, okay, maybe everybody works like that. But that was a great learning for me because I never shy away from, uh, like, even at, uh, when we were setting up all the global businesses and all that, I used to work 18 hours a day and never felt like tiring. Just, you think that's how you should work, you know. And picking up languages and all came easy? No, it's, I'm, I have a learning disability for languages. Okay. So, I don't like uh, speaking other languages. But uh, it didn't bother me then, but it bothers me now, in a sense that, uh, see, even, for example, uh, I did a film called, I mean, film Bombay, and then it was a national hit again, and uh, the next film that I signed up was with Bharatan. Right. In Malayalam. Right. It was not even a Tamil film. Right. Right. So, a lot of people I remember coming and telling me, what is wrong with you, you know, you should do Hindi, you should do this. I said, why? I just want, I like the story, I want to do this. And I want to work with Bharatan. I think I was just curious about learning from people that I've heard great things about, like Bharatan or uh, anybody else and Santosh or Sangeet. I, I just like to, uh, uh, Balu Mahindra sir. Whatever. So, I, I wanted to s just learn at that time, not acting. Right. I wanted to learn the craft and what they do different and why they make certain choices or things like that. 
So Devaragam also had Sri Devi in it. Yes. What was it like working with someone like that? Did you pick up something from the way she performed or the way she approached her role or? No, it's difficult to pick up anything from her in the sense that uh, I've seen her uh, when I was as a child. Uh, I watched Padinaravai Dinle to different movies. I've always seen her from Moonram Pirai to Arve Maim to everything else. I, that's what I right. any Tamil films that I saw had her in it, right? And it's a part of your life in a sense when you grow up with all these. Right. So I, uh, when I went to act with her, it was uh, I was just in awe of uh, her ability to. Transform. You could hardly hear her speak. She'd be very quiet. It'll, it, not like she was a very flamboyant person between the shots and all that. But the moment the camera would come on, there would be like something, you know, extraordinary. It would surprise you each time because it, you never you never get to see it in a you know pre take scenario. You never get to see that side of a uh, of her at all. So when this used to happen, it used to be like uh, such a pleasure to uh, watch and enjoy. Nothing to learn. You can't duplicate that. One of your early films is also this this rural drama called Talat. So considering the fact that you didn't plan your other films as well, you are you going to say no? I wasn't trying to get to the BNC centers. I didn't even know what BNC center market economics and all was. Everybody was saying that you know he's such a. I mean, during Roja, after Roja, was very yuppie and very whatever. Kind of a thing, and so I thought, why should I not do this? I'll do this. So okay. most of my decisions are based on that. Okay. So why uh, not? No, I mean, it, it's, it's somewhere I think there's, uh, you know, just prove everybody wrong kind of a thing, and okay. I can shoot myself in the foot doing that. But uh, what was that experience like? It was, it was an experience. So an experience is meant to be different. Okay. Uh, it's not meant to be successful, or it's not meant to be uh, all that. It's meant to be an experience where you learn something. So that's also the film where you did very hardcore uh, commercial things like dancing and yeah, all that, right? Yeah. I mean, what was that? Like? I always thought of myself as a good dancer in those days. Okay. Because I used to dance for my school uh, in Don Bosco, and we used to win cultural events. The only thing is, I I just lost interest in dancing. Uh, not, when I look back, it's not that I was a great dancer, but I thought I was good, and I thought I could. Manage. I remember in Roja also when uh, I met uh, Sundaram Master for the first time, he said, in the particular dance, I don't know, something he said. And I said, yeah, yeah, Master, no problem, I am a very good dancer. I told him, this is the first thing I told him. So he said, ah, pakalam, pakalam, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when the music goes on and they're saying one, two, three, four, I'm not used to all that, right? So uh, this, this dancing was very different from the dancing that I was used to. I, I remember something that uh, Sujata said when he looked at you, it, it was like you were even dancing like a computer engineer. <laughs> so. Yeah, that part you did, it, I mean, I kind of deliberately okay. that he was actually uncomfortable in that dhoti and he was doing that. <laughs> so that, that, that went to the character. Uh, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to show off that I could dance or I couldn't dance. Right. But then you had Kuchi Kuchi Rakama and all that which had a fair bit of dancing. <laughs> Have you seen your older films recently and you know like reacted to them in a very different way than… No, I mean, the only chance that I get to see some of the films is like uh, Roja and Bombay which are still interesting today. So, okay. uh, but when I see my films mostly, I, I just remember the incidents that happened before, uh, the incidents that happened during the thing, what we actually planned and what we can't. Okay. Uh, so, those are like, it, it's more like memories rather than analyzing, uh, but I can still see it. Is there a film that was the easiest for you to do or the film that was most difficult to do? Would, would you kind of… The easiest is probably the most difficult, Okay, if you know what I mean. I mean, if it's a characterization that is complex, if there's a lot of work that is involved, whatever, then it's easy because you have direction. It's always a problem when you don't have that. Okay. When there's nothing pushing you is when you will fail. Okay. So either you, as an actor, what you start doing is then you start indulging. Right. Uh, you forget the meter because you are bored with what you're doing. Right. It's only that. So you have to curtail that and make sure that you are sincere to what is required. It's not about what you are capable of, it's not an exhibition. So is there a philosophy that you have? Yeah, I think a lot of these choices that you are kind of finding it, I don't know, finding it humorous or finding it intriguing. I'm finding it intriguing, yeah, yeah. not humorous. So, so yeah, it's like, it's, it, I think it comes from what I think about life in a sense. So, and I just feel you are born, you are going to die, right? Uh, I don't believe in like, you know, a lot of people are here say, I'm gonna, it's my legacy and this is my thing. You know, nobody going to remember you. I'm saying there are far greater people who impacted the world who people forget and move on. 
So, I'm not working towards what happens after I die. It doesn't make sense. So, I'm just trying to uh, do things that are interesting for me, make choices that will make me learn something, whatever. Uh, not, I'm not trying to be even a better person in the sense. I mean, I'm not doing these things to be a better, I do other things, but I'm saying I'm not doing this to, uh, I'm just doing this to learn as much as I can. What will, what I'll do with it later, I don't know, but I, uh, something that I don't know that I'm more curious about. I think I need challenges uh, in my life. So, in the next three to four years, I'll do as much as I can. What and happens after that? I'll decide after four years. <laughs> so, this is a question I like to ask actors about name of your filmmakers that you've worked with and, and something that you've either learned from them or an experience of working with them, but begin with Mani Ratnam. I mean, I can talk about technicalities and what I learned from him and all, but that's apart from that, I think what sets him apart from the other people that I worked with is his uh, focus and his in a positive way, his selfishness to get his project the way he wants it. I think that's, uh, that, that uh, passion is incredible. I have not seen it in other people. So. What about Balu Mahindra with whom you did uh, Marupadium? I didn't spend too much time, actually it was a very short thing. I learned a lot of other things like in terms of, uh, it is totally opposite to uh, money's uh, set at that time. Everything would be calm, everything would be like, there was no uh, adrenaline kind of a thing. It was all like very bland, calm, he would be with it and then he would allow me to uh, see through the lens and see what he, what shot he's doing. It was a different experience uh, working with him. What uh, about Mahindra? He's another legend that you yes. worked with. Uh, we did for NFDC. I didn't take any money for it, though I was at my peak during that time, only because I wanted to work with Mahindra, sir. One of the films that I saw about like I think six times in the theatre and I think two, twice or thrice with my mom and she never used to watch Tamil films was Johnny. <laughs> really? I don't know for some reason. Uh, we just kept going for that film and uh, I'm saying from Mullum Malarum. I mean everything that he had done, uh, I think the dialogues for Tanga Padakam also he had written. I think out of all the filmmakers in that generation, a few of those films really stood out for me. And uh, I think he was a genius uh, when he was working at that time. Uh, did things differently, very minimal dialogues, and the dialogues would actually make sense. It was very economical, that's the right word. It wasn't a very… Uh, but Manidatnam's dialogues are also fairly minimal. How was this different from uh, uh, that minimalism? Manidatnam had his own style. Right. Uh, he would say, I mean, that, that would be dialogues uh, in, a, in a particular structure. Uh, and all that. But with Mahindran sir, I'm saying the, it was not about style, it was about the economy. He really respected it as a visual medium, right? Right. So, it would be, and the, his ability to write the dialogues were also great. So, this appealed to me. So, what we did in Tani Urban, for example, is I tried to do that. Now, when I think about, I'm just making the connection now as we have coffee. <laughs> I'm just trying to make that connection. Because I didn't want to speak much. We had a lot of dialogues initially written for the character. So, uh, I told Mohan, I said, so what do you want to communicate in this scene? This is what you want to communicate, right? So, can I do it in a way which is economical? So, Tanyuran actually was very, very, very calculative in a lot of ways. The effect of what I do would impact the next scene or the scene, it's like that, not just about the characterization. I wanted the audience to be occupied by thinking, what is he thinking? I don't want to articulate what I'm what I'm going to do, which is why the surprise element kept happening. There were twists and turns right. that you like because in a lot of our discussion, he said, "Why should we should not explain what we're going to do?" You know, we we respect their intelligence to be able to understand, and by the time they understand, the next twist is starting. Right. And so that that's why it became so interesting. Was it interesting to repeat the role in Dhruva because no. you're practically doing the same thing? No, I didn't want to do the film. Okay. I mean, I I, uh, I just didn't want to do it because one, it was boring. Because in Tani Urban, like I said, uh, you know, we collaborated quite a lot in getting that character and what the choices that he make. We had a debate about smoking and drinking and I said, I don't want to do that because it's like a crutch for a villain and a stereotype. I said, let this guy not do any of that. Let's, I'll, I'll make it convincing without all that kind of a thing. So, thought went into every aspect, right? So, that was the only film I was doing then also. 
in a sense. So, my thought was, it was all there. So, every bit was like sculpted. Even coming out and you know, the eyebrow part, I said, this, uh, there's something else that I feel like doing, but I said, I can't do that. So, let me do this. So, it was all impromptu. It was like there on the set, we thought certain things. So, everything was like, it came out beautifully. So, to go back and do the same thing and then when you see something like this, you don't want any changes. Because the person who's remaking it is not going to make any changes. Right? So, I, and if I were to make changes, uh, again, it would be like my indulgence. Just because I've seen it before does not mean it's not the most effective way to communicate. Yeah. Right? I mean, just because I've seen it before, I shouldn't be bored with it and try and do something new and mess it up. So, that is also, that, that's why it become more difficult. Right. So, you have to do the same thing and I'm not used to, like even if you see, even in, in Mani's film that I'm doing, I, I, very difficult for me to do the same thing in every take also. I don't do it like that. It's just very fluid. The freedom goes away when you're doing remakes and all that. And I really suffered with the language. Okay. I'm being honest. I have, I have a limitation. I cannot speak. Uh, Hindi is something that I learned from school. So, for, for whatever reason, it's, it comes. Uh, because we did live sound in Dear Dad also. So, I didn't, you know, it was quite okay. But uh, other languages is, uh, it, it, it really burdens my mind. And you tend to overact because of that. You don't understand what you're communicating. Right? So, you start gesturing. Okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to communicate through my gestures and mumbling something which I don't understand. So, you suddenly you realize, you're looking at the monitor and saying, why am I doing all this? So, you say, can I do one more? And then you... <laughs> Try and say it in Tamil or in a language that you can come and then do it again. Finally, two more filmmakers, Rajiv Menon and Priya Darshan. With Rajiv, yeah, Minsara Kanave. Right. Uh, Rajiv, I know for a long time, uh, even during the ad days and all that. So, uh, he's always like, uh, you know, uh, it's like you just need to trigger Rajiv with a question and then you learn a lot of things because he'll explain with a lot of conviction and passion. Uh, about everything related to the topic that you mentioned. So, it's all, being around Raji is always uh, educational in that sense. Uh, Priyan, I think his, that time he, he had a, with Ravi K and Sabu and all that, I think more that I took back from that was more of the colors and the visual uh, sense that he had and his ability to do, you know, be clear about what he was doing. So, it would be cut to cut and there would not be much wastage and things like that. So, all these learnings over the years, one would think will find their way into your product you're making. No, all these are just inputs. inputs. Finally, I'll discard a lot of them and I'll have my own and whatever. It is. The choices that I make finally. You seem very confident about this fact that… Yeah, I think mean, just like I'm confident, I was confident about going in front of Rajini Sir. <laughs> Today, I will think like 100 times or I would be, uh, you know, kind of nervous uh, to be in a situation like that more than at least then, I'm saying then I didn't. So, it's like that. It's like anything new you always, uh, I know it's new. I know in my head that I've already, I've seen my film. Right. I've already cut my film. I've already seen the performances, all that. Now, to execute it is the, is the thing. Is the thing. I, I'm confident I'll do it. All the best. Thanks. <laughs>